Hi, welcome to tdcat.com. Before I begin this video, I want to say that if you've ever used a Mac for more than a day, this video is not for you because you will find it ridiculously obvious, the stuff that I'm going to talk about today. This will be everyday stuff for you and for those of you who've probably used Mac since like 1982 or something. I, however, have only used a Mac for the last month, nothing more, and it's a totally new experience for me. And it, it has its differences, it has its good points and its bad points, but what I want to talk about today is some of the main things that have stood out to me about being exceptionally good with a Mac. So here we are in our uh, Mac. This is actually being sort of um, airplayed over to Windows, so I can um, so I can capture it. Uh, I, I suppose I could install some capture software on the Mac itself, but it's easier for me to do it this way. Number one, the menu structure in software. You notice here in the top left hand side on a Mac that you have menus, and the brilliant thing about MacOS is that these menus stay the same. Whatever the software, or if, if software is written properly, these menus will not change at all. So if I go into uh, Chrome here, uh, and I, op you know, I open up Chrome, I get given a menu that's dedicated for Chrome. There's no menu in the window of Chrome itself. Equal <clears throat> Equally, if I open, uh, open up Spotify, Again, Spotify has its own window, but there's no there's no menu at the top. The menu is always here in the top left-hand side, and the structure is always the same. You always have your kind of Apple menu here about your computer, and then you have Spotify menu, so the app name, and you always have preferences under command and comma, and it's they're all done the same, and I absolutely love that. It's brilliant. I mean, it's the way it should be, rather than having a menu across the top of your app window with preferences in one place and in a totally different place on another bit of software, yeah, they're sort of similar, but you don't have this beautiful, simple structure whereby when you switch between apps, your menu switches, and if you go to the desktop, you've got your main finder menu. I absolutely love that. Number two is completely native use of multiple desktops. Now, that is something that's severely lacking in Windows. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take the fact that we have a window here, this is two windows where we've got Spotify and Chrome, and we have our desktop. But if we want to make Chrome full screen, we can do Control-Command-F, and it then becomes full screen, but on its own desktop. So if we go back to the other desktop with a three-finger swipe, we have our desktop and Spotify. So let's make Spotify full screen as well. Control Command F and we now have our desktop, Spotify and Chrome on three completely separate desktops. And we still have the menus because if we go to the top, we still get the menu that drops down, but it takes up the full desktop and you can cleanly and simply switch between them. It's absolutely excellent and is something that I just, you know, feels completely normal to me now that I've used it for just a month. But, you know, it's those things that when you first use them, the very first time you ever sort of step foot in that area of software, if you know, if you know what I mean, I'm going to sound like an apps, like I'm absolutely naive here. Uh, but as I say, first time I'm using a Mac, so do bear with me. Second, uh, sorry, the third thing is the total avoidance of two buttons. The trackpad, as you see here, is just one button. They only have one button and they only need to have one button. So if we go to, um, well, let's tell you what, let's just close down uh, Chrome and let's go back here. If we want to right click, we can just to do two taps on the desktop like that and we do the equivalent of a right click, or alternatively, we can hold down the Alt button on the keyboard and do a tap as well, which I presume that doesn't work because there's nothing to actually right click. But 
it's it's a far better solution having just just one main button because you can perform the multiple functions through just two touches like that or a, a one touch which would be to open an app so if we click if we sort of two touch on here we get options to say remove from dock but if we obviously one click on there it opens the app makes sense far more straightforward because we can click it anywhere you're not reliant on those buttons being in very fixed positions and that to me makes a lot of sense detailed information is number four uh, so if we go to our wireless here if we hover over that uh, or left click on it in fact we get our wireless networks and we and it obviously says which ones which one we're actually connected to if I hold down Alt and left click on there, we have five. We have our uh, network we're connected to, and then we have a ton of information about it. Proper, decent information about that network. Uh, so, kind of noise levels in the in in DBM and the exact mode that this network's currently operating on, and the yeah you know, the SSID and the MAC addresses and all sorts of stuff. Proper information that you have to dig around in Windows. To get and that's true for Bluetooth it's true for the other radios it's true for all sorts of stuff just by sort of doing a right click in that area so if you know if we in fact does that work with two buttons as well no okay that doesn't work with two buttons we hold down so but if we hold down the alt button and go into there easy as that to get detailed information about the stuff you're using number four totally seamless connectivity to my iPhone well there we go I mean that was kind of proven to you then in fact because my the hotspot's not on but it knows my iPhone is around and it tells me uh, it tells me the battery level of my iPhone it tells me the 4G signal on my iPhone and I can connect straight to it no matter what I'm doing and of course, AirDrop, sending files, it's not something that people necessarily use that much. I found I use it quite a lot, actually, to uh, send files to and from my phone. And it's really the fact that with Mac, it works really well. People always talk about Macs and say, oh, well, they just work. With the networking side of things, the connectivity between the two devices is brilliant. It is totally seamless. You know, it's there, it can be connected to, there are no problems with it at all that is a really big plus point for max and i'm going to say number six is simple deletion of apps if you don't want something a lot of your apps end up in the launch pad not everything uh but really you have your you have your kind of apps in here and you can do kind of um uh, a two-finger swipe by the way uh just takes you between pages like that and also, I'm going to actually show you in a browser as well because it's something else that I totally, well, I think is just brilliant. Google.com. And let's just, uh, let's just, in fact, let's just go to the Apple. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I typed in the web address in the search bar. Gosh. <laughs> oh, I feel like a complete idiot. So I love the fact that you can scroll with two fingers. Um, just by moving up and down like that. Let me go into the iPhone page itself and you can see a little bit more about it. I don't want to do a big rave about Apple here. This isn't what this is. This is just my genuine first impressions of using Mac, using MacOS and using a Mac. So yeah, you can scroll. And oddly, the, 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 the thing that I, I kind of thought of when I started doing this is because usually you have a scroll bar down the right-hand side and to get the page to move up, you pull the scroll bar down. So there's actually something inside you that kind of goes automatically does that to move up the page, but you don't, you move up, which is totally logical when you've used it for a small amount of time. And you can obviously do gestures to go backwards and forwards and things like that. But totally normal stuff, the gesture side of things now for people. But when you first start using it and once you get used to it after a few days and you just think, gosh, I really miss this when you use um, any other type of laptop. And, oh yeah, I was sorry, I kind of drifted off sub, off topic there. So yeah, your apps are here. If you want to delete something, if I want to delete Skype, well, I click on it and I drag it to my bin. I'm not going to do it. And that's it. I don't have to go through a big uninstall process. I don't have to um, mess about and w wonder what's left on the computer. I drag it to my bin and it's gone. 
and then maybe I delete my bin every so often in some sort of keeping tidy regime. It is so much nicer as far as software installation and software uninstalls are concerned. Much, much better. And the final one is proper sleep. And I think that's going to be a good ending to this particular look at Max because, well, when you shut this thing, when you shut this, it goes to sleep and it lasts ages. The battery will last days and days and days, like an iPad. Uh, if you do that on a other on other laptops, the battery doesn't last anywhere near as long. They often don't wake up properly. Um, it, it's just not as tidy as, as just closing this. And this is going to go off the screen now because obviously it's going to shut. When I close this, it goes to sleep. And then as soon as you want, when you want to use it again in three days, whatever it might be, open it up, it'll wake up straight away, no delays whatsoever. It just works really, really cleanly and seamlessly. And um, it, that user experience can't be understated because it is so essential when you're using something like this every day, each day and every day. So there you go, seven things there that I just find great about using a Mac and it's not all good. There's definitely bad stuff. <laughs> I found some bad stuff as well, but those things stood out to me as being sort of I've re I really wish I'd started using something like this earlier to have that kind of um functionality. Thanks for watching and uh let me know what you like about Macs. And if you're a regular Mac user, then uh I've probably just reinforced all the all the many things you already probably quite like about them anyway. I will catch you soon. Bye for now.